one thing. Hello. How are you? Good evening. Do you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, teacher, wait a minute. I'm brushing my teeth. <laughs> Okay, no problem. Welcome, guys. Thank you for being on time. Nice, nice to see you. Nice to see you again. Almost finished section five, right? So uh, I'm going to ask the, uh, about the homework uh, in a few minutes when the rest come, when the rest join to the class, okay? So in the meantime, in the meantime, we are going to start with the, okay, with this video, okay, you you probably have traveled some other places or maybe to a different region of the country, not only uh, Central America maybe, but some other places, for example. I don't know uh, who lives, um, in San Salvador, and if you have traveled to the eastern area, which is San Miguel and all those uh, uh, departments of the country, ¿quién ha viajado a otro lugar que no, bueno, primero que no sea El Salvador, y segundo, si no han viajado a otro lugar que no es El Salvador, if there is not another place where you have traveled, maybe you have traveled to another region, otra región del país, ¿Quién ha viajado y ha sentido alguna diferencia? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very different. It's very different, right? Okay, where have you traveled, maybe? Um, I went to Brazil in um, 2015. And in 2015, in 2015. In 2015, and it was um, a big difference in the food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're accustomed to eat um, like a heavy plate with a lot of meat and beans. I don't remember what's the name, but... Um, what the name was or what the name is? Uh -huh. I don't remember what the name is. Uh -huh. Okay, so you, you 2006, you said? Sorry, guys. You know, the internet is not really, really good, and it took me out, but I'm, I'm here. Okay, sorry, maybe. You were saying that you traveled to Brazil. Um, and I didn't like the food. You didn't like the food? Yeah, I, I just remember the, the name. It was Fachuaga. Okay. Something like that. Okay, nice. So you see, uh, where? Uh, what about the rest? Uh, have you ever traveled to a different countries? A different country, I mean. Ever? Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, yeah. Uh, this year, uh, on Holy Week, I traveled to Guatemala to. Tauleo and Chela, Chela. near uh -huh. to the border with Mexico. All right. Yeah. What uh, did you feel different when you traveled to that part of Guatemala? Well, um, Chela, it's very cold, but really very cold. It was Holy Week and the weather there was like, if here, when it's December, but it's very, very cold. 
privilege than to retold them. Um, I don't know. The food have a different taste, you know. But okay. when you when you try something, I mean, you you could eat beans, but it tastes different. Okay, it tastes different, all right? Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. So, and especially the way they speak, right? The way they speak, it's a lot different. They speak a little bit uh, similar, like the Mexicans, right? Yeah. And they yeah. also speak uh, like uh, 18 different idioms, right? Yeah, they... Mm -hmm. Well, inshallah, they speak, uh, I don't know how to say, hmm, dialect in English? Dialects, yeah, they speak dialects. Dialects. Yeah. Speak, yeah. Okay. It sounds, yeah, sounds interesting and, and kind of fun. And, yeah. Okay, nice. Um, so we're going to watch the the first of the video so we can uh, we can listen to the differences on some other countries or what the difference uh, what the differences um, are more like marked right give me a second I'm going to ask you some questions about the video so please pay attention okay? Where was my pen? Let me know if you are able to listen, all right, to the, to the audio. Please help me with the cameras. Who's Ernesto Hernando? Ernesto Alejandro. Hi, Ernesto. <laughs> uh, you know, if I don't see your face, I don't remember you. I don't remember you, uh, you by the name, all right? And Vanessa, uh, are you are you working or where are you? Susana, what happens to you? I so, am, I have, I, sorry, I teacher, I write to you on the chat. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, you texted me. Yes. Oh, uh, you have a stomachache, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes. Sorry. Uh, I know that's horrible. Sorry. I hope you feel better. You recover and you or you get over from from that pain, from that inconvenience. Yeah. So let me see. This is the five section five crossing cultures. So that's what we're going to, going to talk about. Give me a second to get a pen. Right, ready. So that is basically the added, the objective for the class for this section. So we will talk about different, uh, different cultures around the world. Okay, let's watch the video uh, and let me know if you can hear, please. Hi, I'm Chris Brooks. Welcome to Travel World. Have you ever traveled to a country with a completely different culture? If you have, you, you probably hear? know what culture shock is. Yes. It's a feeling yes. of confusion you get from suddenly being in a new environment. The traditions and customs may seem strange. Expectations are different. You don't know exactly what you're supposed to do. You may even be a little bit afraid of making a mistake. In time, you get used to everything. But when you get home, you often have some interesting and perhaps humorous stories to tell about your cross-cultural experiences. Today, we're going to Latin America to meet some people who've traveled abroad and hear about their experiences crossing cultures. First, let's go to Brazil. Ah, yes, Rio de Janeiro. 
Enjoying a spectacular view of Sugarloaf Mountain is our lucky reporter, Fatima Nolan. Hi, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Rio de Janeiro. Like everywhere else in the world, people here like to travel abroad and have some interesting stories to tell. Let's talk with some of them. What's your name and where are you from? My name is Camilla and I was born in Stockholm, Sweden, but I moved to Rio when I was four and I've lived here ever since. Two years ago I went to Sweden and I lived there for a year. What did you notice that was different? Well, the first thing that I noticed when I got to Sweden was how people greet each other. It was completely different because here in Brazil we kiss on the cheek and they shake hands. So I went to kiss like, and they, oh my goodness, what's going on? And they felt like you're invading my space or something like that. It was strange. <laughs> This is Fatima Nolan from Rio de Janeiro. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Fatima. Now, let's cross the South American continent to Lima, Peru, where our reporter Denise Oregui is standing by. Denise? Thanks, Chris. We're here at the beautiful Plaza de Armas. This is a favorite spot for tourists and the people of Lima. Let's talk to some people here about their cross-cultural experiences. What's your name and where are you from? My name's Andrew and I'm from the United States. Have you noticed any difference in the way people do things here in Peru? Yeah, one thing that I've really noticed is the public transportation system is really different. Because here the bus system is private and so there's all these people trying to get you on their bus because the way they make money is by getting as many people as possible to get on their bus. So the whole time they're yelling, get on my bus, get on my bus, and sometimes it's not the bus that you want to be getting on. This is Denisa Regi here in Lima, Peru. Back to you, Chris. Thank you, Denise. Now reporter Hillary Garcia is standing by in Mexico, our final destination for today. What do you have for us, Hillary? Thanks, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Tepoztlan, Mexico, a town that both Mexican and foreign tourists like to visit. Let's talk with a few of them about their cross-cultural experiences. What's your name and where are you from? My name is Delfino Valdez and I was born in Reynosa, Mexico and now I live in the United States. Tell us about your cross-cultural experience. I am married to an American woman and she was making me lunch one day and she brought me a soup and a sandwich. Once I was done with it, I said, okay, honey, where's the rest of it? And she said, that was it. Well, it is customary in my culture to have a huge meal in the middle of the day with the beans, the rice, the meat. So needless to say, I was very surprised. This is Hillary Garcia in Tepoztlan, Mexico. Back to you, Chris. Until next time, this is Chris Brooks for Travel World, bidding you bon voyage. Bon voyage. OK, guys. So, Ernesto, have you ever traveled to a different country? Mm, no. I think that only what Guatemala. Only Guatemala. All right, like ever. He actually visited Guatemala, and uh, I think he visited this year. Uh, but what did you feel in the? Uh, how different did you feel that country, or in which uh, sense you you found something different? Not much, maybe here is more hot than there. there it's is hotter more... here? It's hotter than El Salvador? No, it's, it's cool. Oh, it's, cold. it's cooler, right? Yes. Okay, so the weather is different. What else? The clothes that people use. Yes, they wear the, the clo typical clothes. They they wear typical clothes. That's correct. All right. 
And what else? Anything else? What about food? I don't know. I really, I don't know about food. The beans and the tortillas are tortillas are different in Guatemala from here. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. The beans are black, and tortillas are slimmer. Slim. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, thinner. Yeah. Thinner. Thinner. Thinner than in El Salvador. All right. Nice. Uh, Jancy, have you ever traveled? Have you ever felt a, a, a difference where you travel from a place to another? Sanch, um, Sarai? No, teacher. No? no. Not even in, in El Salvador? Not really. No, no, no I don't. You go, don't go out. Well, um, let's see, Jancy, Andrea, what do you think? Well, I have never go. <laughs> I have never gone out to the suburb. I wish I From could El travel another country, but I have done. I have. Okay, not even to a different place because where are you from? Where do you live? Um, Salvador La Paz, Zacatecoluca. Zacatecoluca. Mm, okay, so you don't go out either. You have never visited another another uh, department, for example, San Miguel, La Unión. Of course, yes, but another country, no. Okay, have you felt or have you noticed a difference uh, between La Paz and San Miguel, for example? Uh, I think the weather. <laughs> it's so different. The weather is it hotter? Mm. Is it hotter or is it colder? What do you think? And I have never gone to San Miguel, but um, Ilobasco, I think. Okay. It's not another important. Okay. Let's see. What about Susana? Have you ever traveled? If you can speak for a while. Yeah, uh, um, I used to travel a lot when I was younger. Um, uh, I used to live actually in Spain for years. Really? Yeah, yeah. and so it's really different. It. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really different, um, most of it, because of the people. They're mm -hmm. like um, a little bit rude. Yeah. A lot, actually. A lot, rude. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and the food mm, is uh is more likely um just um I don't know a jam and things like that like bread and beers. But I I used to eat a lot of um fast food, so I don't know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, and the weather, the the um, the seasons of the year is amazing in in uh, in summer because um, you can uh, you can be like in ten or eleven p.m. and you can see the sun okay. like is fine in the afternoon, so it's okay. amazing that. Okay, so mm -hmm. the the weather is is a lot different right and obviously the yeah. hour right if you yeah. if you left or depart from el salvador to there so you find like how many hours different um eight hours mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you arrive like you went from el salvador and you arrive at what time for example daylight or or which one or how how was it uh let me I, I don't remember actually but uh they're like uh eight hour um están como ocho horas adelantados i don't know how to say that <laughs> forward they are eight hours yeah. ahead okay ahead right. yes right. i know okay nice um i know so the, the food is it's like more like fast food you said no, yo comía más comida así, 
pero ellos son más de jamones y uh, bocatas y quesos, uh, cerveza. Entonces era como que prefiero una hamburguesa, un pedazo de pizza y ya. Really? All right. Yeah. Nice. Nice. That's a nice uh, experience. I mean, I have never traveled to um, to Europe, right? Not, not to the United States, but soon, soon I, I will. Hey, Marina, have you ever traveled abroad? No, I haven't. I never traveled to another country, but right. my aunt traveled to Mexico two years ago. And... I think she didn't notice a lot of difference between Mexico and El Salvador. Just the food. The food is um, spicy. More spicy. Very spicy. Yeah. yeah. Some, of, some of my relatives are, are you know, part of uh, uh, Los Angeles. In part of Los Angeles live a lot of Mexican. So... They uh, they transfer or they transmit their their tradition in in food, for example, and they bring candies and these candies are sour and they are spicy. I've never traveled candies with spicy or so bitter. I mean, like sour, super acidos, and it it's their their tradition as well. Okay, so but with with con alcohol and alcohol candies... as well. Okay, yeah. nice, 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 nice. Hey, Jamie, are you there? And Raul? Yes, I'm here. Teacher. Oh, you are a little sick, you say, right? <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry, guys, to hear that you you don't feel um, too, too fine all right, this, uh, this day. But this is what we're going to talk about um, now. One day I went to San Miguel. It was a long time ago. And the cheese that they prepare is like a lot different. They they leave it like with the serum, como el suero. Uh, so for example, you you you're you're used to eating, si estamos acostumbrados como a comer, the cheese, the fresh cheese like cuajada. But the, the, their cheese is a lot different as well, the, the food and the way they speak, obviously. I don't know if you have heard that it's because of the traditions. Um, the, the Western area, which is Santa Ana, Sonsonate, uh, um, has a lot of um, influence from Mayas pipiles, all right? So they create, uh, they, they believe actually in... Um, How can I say? They they speak a little, a lot different, and they um they have different culture as well as the region of uh, San Miguel in that area on the western, or oh sorry the eastern right western and eastern okay Oriente y Occidente okay so uh the way they speak uh, you can see they say a lot with the jota they speak like that right Guaji cómo está vos Así hablan, they speak like that. Why? We make fun, a veces les hacemos burla, but it's a, it's something that it's because of the tradition, all right? Because of their ancestors. ¿Cómo? ¿Por qué? They believe, for example, that one of the um, sacred trees, los árboles sagrados, they uh, are los uh, con, con acastes. The big trees. Have you heard? Have you seen them? And they have a look like a fruit that it, it, it's like a big ears. Parecían como unas orejas las 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 frutas que de ese que salen del árbol, verdad? Y se supone que es un árbol sagrado porque es como que ellos se se comunican. They communicate with the trees con los dioses por medio del árbol y el el árbol tiene esas frutitas que son las orejitas supuestamente con la que nos escucha cuando hay viento when it's windy they, uh, they, they hear like this sound ok, es, es, escuchan como ese sonido de entonces por eso es que ellos hablan así también, sabían eso hablan con, esas, con ese sonido de la J en lugar de la S la pronuncian así como así 
So it's because of their tradition. For the Mayans or Pipiles, the sacred tree is, the sacred tree is la ceiba. Okay, también. Big trees, and they have cotton. Ellos sí, el, el fruto de la ceiba, it's cotton. Sí, es una cosita que tiene algodón. Okay, and what's special about this tree? The little um, thorns, las espinas. Se han fijado que las, 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 las ceibas tienen espinitas. Entonces, es sagrado porque esos son los que representa el pecho de la mujer. ¿verdad? Entonces, es sagrado porque eso, esas espinitas representan como el busto de la, de la mujer, ¿verdad? Y eso significa fertilidad. So, that's the reason why. So, if you go to um, Sonsonate, part of Santa Ana, like, um, especially Sonsonate, I believe they have very... Um, um, very, like all traditions okay they look like um like um indigenous right indigenous people they don't look like we like we 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 look no no todos pues parecen como nosotros si sí, ellos se ven más así verdad más como uh, más así indígenas si sí, tienen rasgos bastante indígenas son lugares específicos y es, también hablan diferentes Como en Guatemala, they speak a little bit as well, uh, a little different from us, all right? Now, guys, we're going to talk about the relative clause, okay? ¿Qué es un relative clause? Pongamos atención y después me explica. Curious about... Another thing, otra cosa, uh, another thing in um, San Miguel is that they eat a lot of salt, salty food a lot of salt in, in the food and that is like uh, i don't like it too much but it's their tradition they use a lot of salt in the food is learning about the country's culture one thing i'd be enthusiastic about is feelings towards traveling to other countries you'll learn how to use noun phrases to do this so let's get started by me asking you a few questions which you should be able to answer with no problems at all by the end of this class. When traveling to another country, would you be nervous about being far away from your family? Would you feel insecure about traveling alone? Would you be enthusiastic about making new friends? By the end of this class, you'll be able to use noun phrases which contain relative clauses in order to express your ideas when it comes to traveling. So let me present some structure at this particular moment. What we're going to try to do is we're going to try to make sense of these noun phrases which contain relative clauses. Uh, first, we'll start talking a little bit about how we use this as a subject. Uh, then we'll move into the object, probably the object. I'll separate this into a different lecture. So uh, in order to form this kind of um, expressions first we're going to have a subject so in this case this subject becomes one thing uh, then this is followed by a relative clause I really miss and then we're going to have the uh, verb to be uh, in this case as you can see is the verb to be is and then that's followed by um, an object or a phrase if you will so let's write that specific sentence down and then we're going to try to make sense of it as I mentioned let me do that at this point. Okay. All right. So as I mentioned, uh, one thing, sorry, one thing becomes the subject of the sentence. I've I've colored that in green so we can uh, see the difference between what's a verb and what's a what's a uh, what's a subject, what's a relative clause, what's a verb, and what's the object of this particular idea. And then this is followed by the relative clause. I I colored this in blue so you can see what what I'm referring to as a relative clause. And then the verb to be. Now, the verb to be needs to match with the subject, if you will. So if the subject uh, were to be plural, then this should change to are. Um, and then it's followed by the object of the sentence. So in this case, my mom's cooking is the object of the sentence. What we're going to do right now is we're going to include a lot of uh, relative clauses uh, so that you can see that uh, this topic could it can become a little bit confusing. But if we understand 
uh, this structure it, it shouldn't be difficult to complete so let me include um, lots of relative clauses all right and what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to make sense of it by we're gonna try to uh, make different synthesis with them all right so um, I mentioned one thing um, you could you could express this idea by saying something right uh, you could also say two people or you could say two things or you could say uh, two things that I miss would be and then you mentioned what those things are um, but um, let's try to make sense of it here um, so one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking so I've included uh, a few relative clauses and let me get you to answer this by me asking you the question so what would you be nervous about when traveling to another country what would you be anxious about what would you be comfortable with what would you be curious about what would you be enthusiastic about what would you be fascinated by um, let's say that we choose the country uh, maybe France all right so France seems like a very touristic place and I think that a lot of people would like to travel to this particular country so let's do that second one one thing I'd be nervous about is Right, that's gonna follow the bird to be and maybe for me is getting lost all right uh, let me try to keep the format a little bit because I want you to notice that we have one thing is the noun uh, the relative clauses I'll be nervous about then this is followed by the bird to be and then this will be followed by the object of the sentence okay so for me one thing I really be nervous about or one thing I'd be nervous about is getting lost one thing I'd be anxious about is getting to know this new city one thing I'd be comfortable with is the weather one thing I'd be curious about is learning about the country's culture one thing I'd be enthusiastic about is learning the new language one thing I'll be fascinated by is getting to know the history behind the architecture in that particular city. And so you get the idea. Um, so if we follow this pattern, subject plus relative clause plus verb to be plus the object, then we shouldn't uh, have any difficulties expressing these ideas. Uh, just one last thing that I would like to mention that if I change the subject to plural, Okay. I will need to change the bird to be and I will also need to change the object because both things need to be plural. They need to match with whatever the subject is. So for example, two things I really miss are my mom's cooking and my room at home. Okay, that's just to give you an example. And if, if the subject changes to something plural, then you will need to do the same for uh, the rest. So what I would like for you to do now is to practice this concept, but now answer this in your own way. So what would you be nervous about? What would you be anxious about? What would you be comfortable with? And try to give as many responses as you possibly can. Try to write these ideas down as this will help you learn this concept. All right, guys. So you see, what is a relative clause is basically a and um, that, or which, or um, who, okay? Esas son las relative close, closes. Um, ¿Qué son noun phrases? Por ejemplo, two things I will really miss, uh, somebody that I would really um, appreciate is my daughter. So you say, you use the verb to be is or are, depending if something is singular, if something is plural. Now, um, what would you be nervous about? For example, if you travel abroad, what would you be nervous about? Of course, getting lost. Right? Everybody will be uh, will be scared to be lost. Uh, probably eating something new, eating something that you don't like. Or missing your your the traditional dish of El Salvador, for example, missing pupusas because the uh, pupusas are not the same in dif in the other places, right? Even here in El Salvador, there are pupusas that are that taste 
uh, taste horrible and the others are like super delicious. Okay. Uh, in my case, um, something that I would not like uh, or I would be um, bored about is like working all day long, right? Or um, getting cold because I'm used to the, the weather, the hot weather heating in Suchitoto as well. Tell me something about, about yourself, okay? Why would you be nervous? Why would you be anxious about or comfortable with, for example? Or curious about, in my opinion, is I'll be curious about uh, visiting different places, like right, um, learning new vocabulary as well, learning a new language, right? If you go to Sweden, for example, you will definitely speak a little bit uh, of of either Swedish, maybe they speak German, some of them speak French, so some of the phrases you will understand them if you live for a couple of months, maybe. Maybe if you just travel, you will just say, merci if you travel to um, to France, right? Merci, how do you say uh, gracias in, in Italian? Somebody knows? Grazie. Grazie, vaya, a ver, ahí lo Susana. Son cositas, ¿verdad? Que poco, poco, poco a poco uno se va aprendiendo, ¿verdad? De real, de nada, porque yo ya puedo un poquito francés. But for sure you will understand or you will learn certain vocabulary. Okay, so tell me, what would you be nervous, anxious about? Tell me something. Mm. Yes, maybe? So, something that I, I'd be comfortable with is the cold weather. <laughs> I really? like the weather because I like to wear boots and jackets and okay i don't remember the Bufanda. something in my case is the opposite maybe some things i will be afraid about is the cold weather because i know i i sometimes feel like allergic like i feel that i am allergic to where to the cold weather so i know i have to cover myself with hats with gloves and everything so weather, weather or, or um, eating frijoles alcochados, right? Boiled beans. Uh, probably that's something that I will miss a lot. Or oh, el queso duro blandito, right? Something like that, right? I believe that the food is something that you miss the most when you travel or when you're not in your country. And, and obviously your family, right? As um, Susana said, the uh, the relationship you have here yeah you you probably have a party so you probably go out you have a lot of friends to join but in some of play in some other places you have to be quiet you don't you don't you don't have too many people to to uh, to whom you can go out or with whom you can go out thank you maybe okay another example guys can somebody tell me something Um, okay. Uh, yeah, lower hand. Bye. Jancy and then ever. Okay. Um, I'm quite, I'm quite curious about the nice birds. I don't know it. For me, it's something so interesting to know about it. And about the, the night? Sorry, about what? Birds. The, the birds. Uh, night birds. Uh -huh. Okay. Los Aves nocturnas, pero de la noche. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lo night cubo, birds. Cosas. Ah, okay. Okay, uh -huh. got it. Um... um I would be uh, anxious to maybe meet the snow. Yes. Okay. I would like to touch to it, it, to make that like, the snowman, right? The snow. La nieve le gustaría. All right. It's something curious, right? It's something curious. Ever, what do you think? 
uh, one thing I'll be anxious, anxious about is traveling by sea. And yeah. one thing I'll be curious about is watching the boreal, the auroras boreales. I don't know how to say it. How to mm. say that in English. Aren't the same like owls? Those son las mismas? I don't know. But there is something I have curiosity. Okay. Let me see. We we can look for that uh, aura. Aura. I don't remember to be honest. So let's see. let's look for the aura. All right. How do you call aura? Northern yeah. lights. I think. What? Northern lights, it said in the dictionary. Lights. Ave rapaz, vulture, dice aquí. Vulture. <laughs> what is the other, maybe? Northern lights, Aurora. Northern lights. Northern lights. Okay, don't. Pero ese es el del amanecer. Don, don't need beginning. Um, Northern Lights. Pero esas son las luces del norte. ¿A eso se refiere? Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, ok. Aurora, Boreal. Northern yeah. Lights. Miren, nada que ver, ¿verdad? Como la traducción. Ya. Yeah. All right. Nice. The Aurora Bo Boreals. Boreal. Very formal. You can say Boreals as well. Borealis. Let's see how do you pronounce it. No, it doesn't have the the, the sound. All right, and Brandy, do you want to say something? Are you still there? She left already. Okay. She raised her hand, but uh, probably she's a little busy right now. Uh, something else, anybody? I be uh, nervous about travel by airplane. Nervous about is traveling by airplane. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. All right. Thank you for your uh the um, your participation. So let's see the um, another noun phrases containing relative clauses as an object. So we saw the noun phrases uh, containing a relative clause as a subject. Something that I would be nervous about. Eso era something I would be nervous about, something that I would be nervous about. Ese es donde que lleva el relative clause, es el that o el who, okay? Somebody who I would miss a lot if I'm not in my country is my family or is my daughter, right? Eh, eso es, somebody is, okay? Ese es el sujeto. Ahora veamos el objeto. Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to express your feelings towards traveling to other countries. You'll learn how to use noun phrases to do this. In our previous class, we learned how to express these ideas. And what we focused on learning was how to express the, these ideas and using the noun phrases as the subject of our sentence. What we're going to do today is we're going to focus on the right side of this chart and we're going to learn how to use the noun phrases as the object of our sentence. So if you recall our previous lesson, we learned one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking. And we learned this sort of formula here, subject plus relative clause plus the verb to be and then the object. Uh, that, that's the activity. What we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to borrow this object and we're going to turn that into the subject of our sentence. Um, so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep one of those ideas there so you can see exactly what happens whenever we make that particular change. What we want to do is we want to change this statement, one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking, into my mom's cooking is one thing I really miss. By the way, 
it's important to mention, and I think I did not mention this in our previous lesson, that what you see in parentheses is optional. That means that you can either use it or, you know, exclude it from your sentence. So one thing that I really miss is my mom's cooking. That's correct. But also if you just say one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking. Either one of those two sentences is correct. Let me write this structure down so you can see what's going to happen whenever we make this change. As I mentioned previously, what we want to do is we want to change this noun phrase that is being used as the subject. That means that the noun phrase, one thing I really miss, is the subject of our sentence. Uh, and basically what we want to do is we want to change that into being the object of our sentence, as you can see here in our next example. So um, the structure is the following. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, we're going to change my mom's cooking into that being the subject of our sentence. All right. So let me go ahead and write that down. I'm going to say my my mom's cooking. That becomes the subject of our sentence now. All right. Uh, what I'm going to do is. I'm, I'm just going to make sure that um, uh, this is quite clear, so I'm going to uh, put in those spaces there. So I'm also going to go ahead and change that color to make sure that we um, see what's happening, right? So that's in green. The subject is in green. So I'm, I'm changing my mom's cooking, which was the object of our previous sentence, to that being the subject of our sentence now. Now, notice that the verb to be also changes in location, and the verb to be follows the subject. So my mom's cooking. All right, and that's the verb to be, is, let me change the color there as well. Okay, there we go. Uh, then this follows the noun phrase, all right? So what do I mean by the noun phrase? Uh, well, uh, uh, previously it was the subject of her sentence, and also that would follow the relative clause. So literally this is what I'm going to put here. I separated it so that you could see actually what happened there, all right? Uh, but the, the noun, uh, and I, I think I colored that differently, so let me make sure everything matches here. All right, um, and that's basically what happened. Just a couple of things changed. Number one, we had to change the object of our previous sentence to that being the subject of our new sentence. So my mom's cooking. Uh, and then that followed the verb to be. So the verb to be follows the subject. My mom's cooking is one thing I really miss. If we look at our previous examples, the ones that we did in our previous lesson, uh, in which we said one thing I'd be nervous about is getting lost. So let's say that I wanted to change this idea and I wanted to use this uh, noun phrase, but now being used as the object, all right? Um, and, and so let me write that idea down. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to change this, uh, this activity getting lost, which in our previous sentence was the object of our sentence, and we're going to change it to the subject. So for example, we'll say getting lost, all right, that's, that's, uh, that becomes the subject of our sentence, okay? That follows the verb to be, is, and then um, that will follow uh, the noun phrase, all right? So we're going to say is uh, one thing, okay? And then that follows the relative class. I'll be um, nervous so, about, all right? Uh, very important. I want you to notice what happens with this preposition. This preposition uh, will typically go at the very end, as you can see. So I want to emphasize this real quick. Um, and what I would like for you to do is to use um, the same ideas that you wrote down in the previous class, but change the order of them. The goal is to practice. As you can see, um, we, we have the same ideas here on the example. Something I'd be nervous about is making new friends. What we do is we change the order of this and we say making new friends is something I'd be nervous about or making new friends is something that I would be nervous about. 
um, two people I email every day are my parents. My parents are two people I would email every day. So what I would like for you to do is to practice making the previous sentences to those being used as the object of your sentence, sort of like the example that you see here. do is to use um, the same ideas that you wrote down in so, the previous class but guys give me the same idea but in this case you just change the order okay one thing i will be nervous about is mm, traveling by by airplane you said all right so traveling by airplane is something that i would be nervous about mm -hmm. that is the example tell me more examples Uh -huh. mm, um, drinking a coffee with my friends is something that I really missed. Okay, okay. Something I really... Okay, eat, drinking coffee or drinking a cup of coffee with my friends. A coffee is not necessary. Usually a cup of coffee or just drinking coffee is something I miss with my friends, all right? Nice, good example, maybe. Thank you. Jancy and then Ever. Um, meeting the snow is something that I would be that it would... Jancy, I don't hear you. Excuse me. Yes, Andrea, Chancy, Andrea, you raise your hand. Can you hear me? Yes, now I can. Okay, okay, okay. Tenía el micrófono acá. <laughs> okay, uh, meeting the snow is something that make will make me feel happy. Something happy. that would make me feel happy. Okay, good job. Ernesto, what is your example? Uh, traveling by sea is something I'll be anxious about. Good example. Marina? Meet new people is one thing that I could be nervous about. Nice, good see. Super easy, guys. I know you pay attention to the video, so I know it's um it's something very, very simple. Okay. Uh you, did you do the homework, guys? Some of you sent the homework, some of you haven't sent the homework. So what are um the voiced letters? Mm-hmm. That's what we're going to talk about the last seven minutes. Voiced letters. What are them? Yes. I don't know if if ah. Uh, if it is correct, but I think B. Letter B, of course, is no is voiced. Yeah. Voiced. Good yeah. job. Okay, next. What else? Mm -hmm. The letter D and D as Z. well. Yeah. The letter D. And the of letter first, the letter D. Z. C, no, C is voiceless. Voiceless. Okay. Yes. Oh, come on, guys. P, I cannot voiceless. believe it. Yeah, voiced, first voice. Ahorita solo con los voiced. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, G. Good job, okay. Good job, G. Mm-hmm. 
Next. The J. The J. Okay. V. George. Yes, Marina. Z. F. Letter F. F. Um, no, it's not. It's not voiced. Uh, can you repeat, Marina? Z. D. Z. Yeah. Z. Z. Oh, Z. Z. Yeah. Z. Z. Yeah. Letter S. Z. Z. La letra Z. 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 Mm -hmm. ¿Qué más? ¿Qué más? What else? R. The R, of course. Las estoy poniendo en orden. Oh, right. Ya, yeah, pero aquí después de la G le faltan varias. L, M. L and M, correct. L, M. That's it. Good job. So, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, L, A, J, A, L, M, K, L, M, O, P, Q, R. You say R as well. Good job. Uh -huh. S, C, S. The S, the double S maybe. Mm -hmm. Kiz. Kiz. Depende, la S no, no siempre es, es, no es voiceless, no todo el tiempo. M, Y. Y, yeah, good job. Y. W. And and what about V? No, do, and W too, correct. V, yeah. W, and Z. Vaya, creo que ahí nos quedamos con la mayoría. Ok. Ahora, las que no son voiced, son voiceless. Ya las tenemos ahí. Las que no les pusimos voiced, están en las voiceless. ¿Cuáles serían? F, K, T. T. So we start with the C, the F, yeah? C, H. C, H. B. What? T. 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 as in pilot. And T, uh, P as in pilot. Delay. Good. And T as tango as well. Yeah. Pero esta le vamos a poner un, as, un asterisco. ¿Que ¿Se acuerdan que había una excepción que las T con las D sí pronunciábamos esa, esa, esa ED, ¿verdad? Por eso es que le estoy poniendo el asterisco. ¿Ok? Vamos. What, eh, what else? Tenemos también la GH que se pronuncia como F. Por ejemplo, laugh. Laugh. La GH es GH. Ok. What else? SH. Very good. SH. Correct. SH. Ajá. PF. PF. PH. Ajá. PH, yeah. PH. Sí, como, P, como Philip. Ajá. Porque también se pronuncia como P. Como F. Sorry. P. What else? What else? Hay más? E T H. Okay. What else? What else? ¿Qué más? Dame un minutito, mi amor. Espérame, princesa. Ajá. N G. N G. G G G. No, esa va en la primera. Voiced. Espérame. No, no, no. N D. N D. Ok. Like Angla. ¿A dónde lo encontraron? ¿Cuál ejemplo se me pueden dar? Vaya, me faltó una bien importante. Esta yo no la había, no la había eh, visto mucho, pero está la S también. Eh, y no me la P E K R S T U V la X no me la dijeron. Eh, et, entre, entre estas. Ahorita se las mando. Nos vemos mañana y vamos a hablar sobre la terminación de estos, de estas cosas, ¿ok? De cómo pronunciar las palabras. See you tomorrow. Bye, bye. Bye. bye.